you remember the old bus we bought and uh, was hauling kids from Westfield to Noblesville, 10th Street? I remember telling people I was looking for a bus and a friend of mine called me and said, I seen one at the Catholic Church. And uh, I went over to the Catholic Church and looked at it, fired it up, drove it, had no oil pressure, but it sounded good. Nice, nice bus. Had a good price on it because they thought they had a blowed motor. I bought the thing, took it home, put a manual gauge on it, shot right up to 60 pounds of oil pressure. And from that time there, for two or three years, we hauled students from UBC every service. I seen times when that bus was loaded from the front to the back, standing up. In fact, a few times we had them sitting in the steps of the bus with their heads down where the police couldn't see them, <laughs> afraid that they would get stopped. In 1984, I had Brandon. And we'd had such a bad experience with Janella getting dedicated in Dayton, Ohio, and acting up and throwing up and everything. We had Brandon dedicated the first Sunday I brought him to church. <laughs> so he was like a week and a half old. And you didn't want to have any problems. No, I wanted him to sleep the whole time. And so Brother Sutherland dedicated him. Brother Loomis was a, a wonderful man. And uh, we all loved him. Uh, but he had a habit of testifying forever <laughs> and not saying a whole lot while he was doing it. Just, he was in one of his prime show and tell episodes. And About two thirds of the way through his testimony, Dana Ely jumps up, goes up front and gets a flower pot off of the, the front of the church up there, comes back and hands it to him. Afterwards, Danny said to me, he said, I said, why did the Lord want me to do that? I said, I don't know, Danny, he didn't tell me to. <laughs> and so we all had to hold our sides to keep from laughing. Uh, Danny pretty well dampened that show and tell episode. Do you remember uh, when Brother, uh, let's see here. Uh, I remember a lot of things about this building. Yeah, Brother Sproles, they, they were up there putting decking on the roof mm -hmm. and he went and nailed his foot right to the roof. <laughs> <laughs> he had to get somebody to pull the, the nail off of the, the roof first yeah. with his boots to, uh, still through his boot and then he had to Take him pull it out of the old boot. It was a, it was a good time. <laughs> I took a ride down that roof on a piece of sheet of plywood. I fortunately, there was a block, he had put a blocker at the bottom and I was able to get my foot down enough. I don't think it would really hurt me because it's not that far from the bottom, top of the roof, but I mean, bottom of the roof, you know. But I slid right down. Jerry Glick was hollering the whole thing. You're right, you're right. Yes, well, okay. I started um, choir, and um, we only had it at Christmas. And um, then it was not drama. We'd have room for drama. So we had cantatas, where you had a narrator. And the very first program I did, the narrator was Dave Dorsett. He had this nice radio voice. And that church was packed. Brother Boynton would always come, bring his family, and we got kind of notorious for our big Christmas programs. After a couple years, we were still at 10th Street, and Carol Farney, who was um, a Fulton, was head of the uh, children's program, the, their uh, kindergarten, at the Westland Church in Westville right down Union Street, and she heard that they had choir robes the Westland Church did they were going to get rid of. I said, what color are they? And they're green and gold. I'm like, ugh. But they were robes, and they were in good condition, and they had the, the collar things around them. And, and so Becky Glick and I got together, because by that time she was always playing for me, and we wanted the choir robes. We were really going to be high church. <laughs> So we got them and cleaned them and wore them. Uh, we wore them in on 10th Street. We wore them after the church was sold and we were in the process of trying to get, you know, start our, um, to build a building. And we were meeting at the um, 4-H Winks building. Yeah. And Becky Glick and I played a duet, Hallelujah Chorus, and the choir was in full green robes and their splendor. And we had a great program. I think Keith Ackerman was the narrator that night. And we had a good time together. 
and then we put all those robes back in the storage container. Well, when the church got built and we were ready to, to move in, I do remember, I'm going to call out some names, it was John Thomas and myself. We decided, amongst the whoever's there, decided these green choir robes just would not go in our mauve sanctuary. Oh, no. And we just figured that, you know, we probably had done used the, enough of them that we could just get rid of it. So John and I was kind enough to put them in the dumpster. <laughs> and me and Becky Glick were not happy. <laughs> Dave oh, and Dave John Tom, throw one stuff get away. Rid. Let's get rid of it. <gasps> Taking up too much space. <laughs> we, we replaced them, put them right in the dumpster, closed the lid. And we didn't tell our wives or anybody else that we had done that until a few weeks later that they were looking for choir robes. And so then we're getting ready for a Christmas program and me and Becky are trying to find the green choir robes. And they sheepishly tell, them, tell us they've been long gone. And we weren't blessed. Not one bit. <laughs> they have never let us forget. Never let us forget that. that we threw away the choir, the That's green, right. lovely green choir robes. So that was the end of the green choir robes. <laughs> <laughs>